Lord, open our eyes to see you, our ears to hear you, and our hearts to receive you. Amen. So here we are at the beginning of Lent. Last week, we were at the midpoint of Mark's gospel up on the mountaintop with the vision of the transfiguration. And this week, we're back at the beginning of the gospel, down by the Jordan River, and then off into the wilderness. So Jesus comes up out of the water, and the heavens are torn open. The spirit descends like a dove. A voice, just like in the mountains, says, this is my son, the beloved. And then Jesus is driven into the wilderness. This is not the quiet pastoral scene of a peaceful baptism by any description. The Greek that we translate as torn only appears twice in Mark's gospel. Once here, as the heavens are torn open to allow the inbreaking of the spirit. And then that moment when Jesus dies on the cross and the temple curtain that hides the Holy of Holies is torn in two. The Greek word is a particularly violent, tearing. The two appearances of this word serve as bookends to Jesus' ministry on earth. The spirit descends like a dove into Jesus, the passage says. And as the apostle Paul would say and wrote, I know a person who described being at a Sunday Eucharist and seeing the spirit descend into the priest as she laid her hands on the bread at the words of the consecration. What the person saw was a white flash like lightning that came down into the Di literally like dive bombing the priest. She appreciates this, so she speculates that this is what the image may have looked like as the spirit descends upon Jesus. And this made sense to me when you put it in context. For the spirit then drives Jesus into the desert. This is not a, would you come and follow me invitation, but an intentional driving into the wilderness. Then Jesus spends 40 days in the wilderness. 40 is one of those biblical numbers that means a lot. <laughs> in the story of Noah and the flood, it rains 40 days and 40 nights. Moses and the Israelites spent 40 years in the desert. So this is a reoccurring theme. Lent in our tradition is 40 days of fasting and penitence. Lent is an invitation that comes around every year to spend 40 days in the wilderness. In our civilized and settled world, we tend to want to avoid the wilderness, but the wilderness will often find us, even in the safe and seemingly secure world of our homes and communities. The current political, financial, and spiritual world certainly seems to be a real wilderness for many of us right now, filled with challenges and trials. For thousands of years, people have known that while the wilderness can be a frightening and threatening place, it's also a place of opportunity. The wilderness is a place where we are formed, whether we want to be formed or not. In the Bible, Moses meets God in the burning bush in the wilderness. Elijah meets God in the silence of the wilderness. Jacob sees the heavens open and angels ascending and descending while he is in the wilderness. All of them are changed people after experiencing God in the wilderness. Many cultures around the world understand the importance, the necessity of wilderness experiences. American Indians, especially the young men, would be given a name at birth, but it was not their name for life. When they came of age, they would go into the wilderness to find their true name, their true self. They would be formed and marked for life by their experience. We have lost that concept. 
in today's world. I remember how important it was for our sons to experience the Order of the Arrow weekend in Boy Scouts. They had to spend a weekend on their own camping and just being by themselves. Adults did check in on them, but they were basically on their own for a weekend to get to know themselves better. And they both came out of that experience with more confidence in who they were as a young man. Richard Rohr, the Franciscan monk, believes that we need to reclaim this willingness to enter into the wilderness to find who God calls us to be. Without this, he believes we can never leave childhood and enter, enter into the second half of life, as he calls it. Lent is, a, is our annual opportunity to embrace the wilderness and allow it to help us see where God is calling to us. Many people fear making this step. Many are afraid that if they really open up to God, there'll be a heavy price to pay. However, what they forget is that there is a price to pay if we do not open ourselves up to God and the Spirit. The reward of traveling through the wilderness is a deeper relationship with God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit. The reward is being able to move forward with the Spirit on the great journey that God has planned for us. Right now, grace is in a time of transition, a time of wilderness, as Reverend Leah moves on to a new position in Austin and as this church seeks a new rector. It's not an easy time for grace. We can look at wilderness times as stumbling blocks that we would like to avoid are stepping stones that we use to reach another place in our lives and the life of the church. The difference between stumbling blocks and stepping stones is in how you use them. Wilderness time is a time in which to discern how to turn the stumbling blocks of life into stepping stones. As individuals and as a parish, we have potential stumbling blocks in our way. That's just how the world is. That's also how the church is. But the church as a body of Christ has never been static. The church has always been an agent for change and is always changing as long as the church listens to the spirit. And the brother gives a word series from the Society of St. John the Evangelist, brother Mark Brown wrote, the church, the body of Christ, is essentially progressive, rooted in the past, grounded in the eternal, but always renewing, always renovating. The spirit is not willing to allow us to sit still and be complacent. That has always been true. And when we get into trouble as a church and as individuals, I believe it is because we have become complacent. One of my favorite mystics and author from the beginning of the 20th century, Evelyn Underwood, wrote, the coming of the kingdom is perpetual. Again and again, freshness, novelty, and power from beyond the world break in by unexpected paths, bringing unexpected change. Those who cling to tradition and fear all novelty and God's relation to the world deny the creative activity of the Holy Spirit and forget that what is now tradition was once innovation, that the real Christian is always a revolutionary, belongs to a new race, and has been given a new name and a new song. My hope and prayer for this Lent is that we as individuals and as a congregation will be open to the inbreaking of the Spirit. I pray that we will invite the power from beyond our world to break into this world and reveal unexpected paths. I pray this Lent that we will allow the creative activity of the Holy Spirit to lead us into new pathways so that we may sing a new song of God's love for all the world to hear. Amen. <laughs>